Mengistu Haile Mariam Amharic pronounced Mengistu Hal Marjam, born the 21st of May 1937, is an Ethiopian soldier and politician who was the leader of Ethiopia from 1977 to 1991. He was the chairman of the Derg, the military junta that governed Ethiopia, from 1977–87, and the president of the People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia PDRE, from 1987–91. The Derg took power in the Ethiopian Revolution following the overthrow of Emperor Haile Selassie I in 1974, marking the end of the Solomonic dynasty which had ruled Ethiopia since the 13th century. Mengistu purged rivals for power from the Derg and made himself Ethiopia's dictator, attempting to modernize Ethiopia's feudal economy through Marxist-Leninist-inspired policies such as nationalization and land redistribution. His bloody consolidation of power in 1977–78 is known as the Ethiopian Red Terror, a brutal crackdown on opposition groups and civilians following a failed assassination attempt by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Party in September 1976, after they had ignored the Derg's invitation to join the Union of Socialist Parties. Internal rebellion and government repression characterized Mengistu's presidency, the Red Terror period being a battle for dominance between the Derg, the EPRP and their rivals the All Ethiopia Socialist Movement, who had initially aligned themselves with the Derg. While this internal conflict was being fought Ethiopia was threatened by both Somali invasion and the guerrilla campaign of the Eritrean People's Liberation Front who demanded independence for Eritrea, then a province of Ethiopia. The Ogaden War of 1977–78 over a disputed border region with Somalia was notable for the prominent role of Mengistu's Soviet and Cuban allies in securing an Ethiopian victory. The catastrophic famine of 1983–85 is what brought his government the most international attention. Mengistu left for Zimbabwe in May 1991 after the PDRE National Assembly dissolved itself and called for a transitional government. His departure brought an abrupt end to the Ethiopian civil war. Mengistu Haile Mariam still lives in Harare, Zimbabwe, and remains there despite an Ethiopian court verdict finding him guilty in absentia of genocide. Mengistu's government is estimated to be responsible for the deaths of 1,200,000 to over 2 million Ethiopians. Topic: <laughs> Early life. Mengistu's Oromo father, Haile Mariam Wald Ayana, was born in Fury, 8 km west of Addis Ababa now within Addis Ababa due to the city's growth. He was in the service of the Shuan landowner Afenigus Eshete Geda, who had encountered him while he was on a hunting expedition in the administrative district of Gimira and Maji, then under the governorship of Dejazmik Te Gulilat. He later became an enlisted man in the Ethiopian army. Afenigus Eshete Geda was the half brother of Dejazmik Kebid Tesima's wife, Woiziro Yitateku Kidan, and it was through this connection that Mengistu's parents are alleged to have met. Unsubstantiated accounts allege that Mengistu's mother was the illegitimate daughter of Dejazmik Kebid Tesima, a high ranking nobleman and crown counselor to Emperor Haile Selassie, and himself suspected of being the illegitimate son of Emperor Menelik II. These rumors of Mengistu being the grandson of Dejazmik Kebid are widely believed, but have never been confirmed by either Mengistu himself or by the late nobleman's family. Mengistu was born on 21 May 1937 in Walaita or Kaffa province. His mother died during childbirth when Mengistu was only eight years old. After the death of his mother, Mengistu and his two siblings went to live with their grandmother for a few years. He then came back to live with his father and soon after joined the army at a very young age. Mengistu's father was very proud of his son's achievements, though some people believe the Ethiopian popular account that states that his family was far from proud of his political accomplishments. <laughs> <laughs> Army life Mengistu followed his father and joined the army, where he attracted the attention of the Eritrean-born General Aman Andam, who raised him to the rank of sergeant and assigned him duties as an errand boy in his office. Mengistu graduated from the Holeta Military Academy, one of the two important military academies of Ethiopia. 
General Amman then became his mentor, and when the general was assigned to the commander of the 3rd Division took Mengistu with him to Hara, and later was assigned as Ordnance Officer in the 3rd Division. A few years before his departure for training to the U.S. he was in conflict with the then 3rd Division Commander General Haile Bakaden whose policy of strict discipline and order did not sit well with Mengistu. At the time, the Ordnance Group was offered military technical training support in the U.S. Despite his disapproval of Mengistu's insubordination and disrespect, the general was obliged to release him and Mengistu went for a six-month training program in Maryland, United States. Returning after his training, he was expected to command the Ordnance Subdivision in Hara. Years later, Mengistu would murder General Haile Bakaden along with the 60 ministers and generals. While studying in the United States, Mengistu experienced racial discrimination, which led him to a later strong anti-American sentiment. He equated racial discrimination in the United States with the class discrimination in Ethiopia. When he took power, and attended the meeting of Derg members at the 4th Division headquarters in Addis Ababa, Mengistu exclaimed with emotion, in this country, some aristocratic families automatically categorize persons with dark skin, thick lips, and kinky hair as barriers, Amharic for slave. Let it be clear to everybody that I shall soon make these ignoramuses stoop and grind corn. Baruz Yud notes that Mengistu was distinguished by a special ability to size up situations and persons, although Baru notes that some observers rather charitably Equated this ability with intelligence, the academic believes this skill is more akin to street smarts. It is rather closer to the mark to see it as inner city smartness or what in local parlance would be called aridanat. The rise of the derg Emperor Haile Selassie's government, having lost the confidence of the Ethiopian public following a drought and crop failures in Wello province, was overthrown in the Ethiopian Revolution of 1974. As a result, power came into the hands of a committee of low-ranking officers and enlisted soldiers led by Atnafu Abate, which came to be known as the Derg. Mengistu was originally one of the lesser members, officially sent to represent the 3rd Division because his commander, General Nega Tegnen, considered him a troublemaker and wanted to get rid of him. But between July and September 1974, Mengistu was a member of the Derg, though he preferred to act through more public members like his former mentor, General Aman Andam, and later Tafari Benti. Mengistu and Atnafu Abate were the deputy chairman of Derg from March 1975 to February 1977. Haile Selassie was strangled in 1975. It is rumored that Mengistu smothered the emperor using a pillowcase, but Mengistu has denied these rumors. Though several groups were involved in the overthrow, the Derg succeeded to power. There is no doubt that the Derg under Mengistu's leadership ordered the execution without trial of 61 ex-officials of the imperial government on 23 November 1974, and later of numerous other former nobles and officials including the Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Abuna Theophilos, in 1977. Mengistu himself has acknowledged that the Derg ordered these deaths, but refuses to accept personal responsibility. Members of the Derg have contradicted him in interviews given from prison, saying he conspired and was in full agreement with their decisions. <inaudible> <inaudible> Leadership in Ethiopia Mengistu did not emerge as the leader of the Derg until after the 3 February 1977 shootout, in which Tafari Banti was killed. The vice chairman of the Derg, Atnafu Abate, although with some support at this time, clashed with Mengistu over the issue of how to handle the war in Eritrea and lost, leading to his execution with 40 other officers, clearing the way for Mengistu to become the complete master of the situation. He formally assumed power as head of state, and justified his execution of Abate on 13 November of that year by claiming that he had "...placed the interests of Ethiopia above the interests of socialism." and undertaken other «counter-revolutionary» activities. Under Mengistu, Ethiopia received aid from the Soviet Union, other members of the Warsaw Pact, and Cuba. <laughs> Political conflicts 
From 1977 through 1978, resistance against the Derg ensued, led primarily by the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Party EPRP. Mengistu cracked down on the EPRP and other revolutionary student organizations in what would become called the Red Terror. The Derg subsequently turned against the socialist student movement MEISON Amharic, a major supporter against the EPRP in what would be called the White Terror. The EPRP's efforts to discredit and undermine the Derg and its MEISON collaborators escalated in the fall of 1976. It targeted public buildings and other symbols of state authority for bombings and assassinated numerous Abayat Sedad and MEISON members, as well as public officials at all levels. The Derg, which countered with its own counter-terrorism campaign, labeled the EPRP's tactics the White Terror. Mengistu asserted that all progressives were given freedom of action in helping root out the revolution's enemies, and his wrath was particularly directed toward the EPRP. Peasants, workers, public officials, and even students thought to be loyal to the Mengistu regime were provided with arms to accomplish this task. Mengistu gave a dramatic send off to his campaign of terror. In a public speech, he shouted, Death to counter revolutionaries! Death to the EPRP! and then produced three bottles of what appeared to be blood and smashed them to the ground to show what the revolution would do to its enemies. Thousands of young men and women turned up dead in the streets of the capital and other cities in the following two years. They were systematically murdered mainly by militia attached to the Kebelis, the neighborhood watch committees which served during Mengistu's reign as the lowest level local government and security surveillance units. Families had to pay the Kebelis a tax known as the Wasted Bullet to obtain the bodies of their loved ones. In May 1977 the Swedish General Secretary of the Save the Children Fund stated that, "...one thousand children have been killed, and their bodies are left in the streets and are being eaten by wild hyenas. You can see the heaped up bodies of murdered children, most of them aged 11 to 13, lying in the gutter, as you drive out of Addis Ababa." Military gains made by the monarchist Ethiopian Democratic Union in Begemda were rolled back when that party split just as it was on the verge of capturing the old capital of Gonda. The army of the Somali Democratic Republic invaded Ethiopia having overrun the Ogaden region, and was on the verge of capturing Hara and Daya Dawa, when Somalia's erstwhile allies, the Soviets and the Cubans, launched an unprecedented arms and personnel airlift to come to Ethiopia's rescue. The Derg government turned back the Somali invasion, and made deep strides against the Eritrean secessionists and the TPLF as well. By the end of the 70s, Mengistu presided over the second largest army in all of sub-Saharan Africa, as well as a formidable air force and navy. Amnesty International estimates that up to 50,000 people were killed during the Ethiopian Red Terror. Embracing Marxism In the 1970s, Mengistu embraced the philosophy of Marxism-Leninism, which was increasingly popular among many nationalists and revolutionaries throughout Africa and much of the Third World at the time. In the mid-1970s, under Mengistu's leadership, the Derg regime began an aggressive program of changing Ethiopia's system from a mixed feudo-capitalist emergent economy to an Eastern Bloc-style command economy. Shortly after coming to power, all rural land was nationalized, stripping the Ethiopian church, the imperial family and the nobility of all their sizable estates and the bulk of their wealth. During this same period, all foreign-owned and locally owned companies were nationalized without compensation in an effort to redistribute the country's wealth. All undeveloped urban property and all rental property was also nationalized. Private businesses such as banks and insurance companies, large retail businesses, etc. were also taken over by the government. All this nationalized property was brought under the administration of large bureaucracies set up to administer them. Farmers who had once worked on land owned by absentee landlords were now compelled to join collective farms. All agricultural products were no longer to be offered on the free market, but were to be controlled and distributed by the government. Despite progressive agricultural reforms, under the Derg, agricultural output suffered due to civil war, drought and misguided economic policies. 
There was also a famine in 1984, which was the tenth anniversary of the Derg. The Soviets hailed Ethiopia for its supposed similar cultural and historical parallels to the USSR. Moscow said it proved that a backward society could become revolutionary by adopting a Leninist system. It was hailed as a model junior ally that Moscow was eager to support. In the 1980s Ethiopia plunged into greater turmoil and the Soviet system itself was collapsing by 1990. Russian commentators had turned scornful of the Ethiopian regime during the Ogaden War, learning that after the fall of Jijiga to units of the Somali army, the 2nd of September 1977, Ethiopian units had started to mutiny. Mengistu flew to the front and took direct control. According to Gebru Tareki, he ordered those suspected of leading the mutiny bayoneted as cowardly and counter-revolutionary elements. Then had the soldiers regrouped and ordered to recapture Jijiga in simultaneous attacks from the west and north. The Ethiopians recaptured the city on 5 September, but Jijiga remained within range of the Somali artillery, which shelled the city the whole night long. The next day the Somalis counterattacked, considerably strengthened and ever more determined. And before he could be encircled inside the city, Mengistu fled back to Adu on the 7th where he boarded a plane back to Addis Ababa. The Somalis broke through Ethiopian lines, recapturing Jijiga on 12 September, and managing to overrun Ethiopian positions past the Marta Pass. In early 1984, under Mengistu's direction, the Marxist Leninist Workers' Party of Ethiopia WPE was founded as the country's ruling party, with Mengistu as general secretary. On 10 September 1987, a new Soviet-style constitution was adopted, and the country was renamed the People's Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Mengistu became president, with sweeping executive and legislative powers. Due to the doctrine of democratic centralism, he was effectively a dictator. He and the other surviving members of the Derg all retired from the military. However, even as civilians, they dominated the Politburo of the WPE. In the late 1980s, some Western critics of Mengistu, including Michael Johns of the Heritage Foundation, charged that Mengistu's economic, military and political policies, along with the Soviet Union's support for Mengistu, were key contributing factors to Ethiopian famine, which ultimately took over 500,000 lives. Mengistu made seven visits to the Soviet Union between 1977 and 1984, as well as other visits to his political allies Cuba, Libya, South Yemen, and Mozambique. From 1983 to 1984 Mengistu served as head of the Organization of African Unity. However, the government's military position gradually weakened. First came the Battle of Afabe in March 1989, a defeat at the hands of the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, with 15,000 casualties and the loss of a great deal of equipment. This was followed up less than a year later by another crushing defeat at Shire, with over 20,000 men either killed or captured and the loss of even more equipment. On 16 May 1989, while Mengistu was out of the country for a four-day state visit to East Germany, senior military officials attempted a coup and the Minister of Defense, Haile Georges Habte Mariam, was killed. Mengistu returned within 24 hours and nine generals, including the Air Force commander and the Army Chief of Staff, died as the coup was crushed. Topic. Asylum in Zimbabwe. By 1990, the Soviet Union had all but ended its support for Mengistu's regime. In a bid to buy more time, Mengistu renounced communism in 1990 and began taking steps toward opening the economy. However, the liberalization of Ethiopia's markets only lasted for one year under DPRE. In May 1991, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front EPRDF forces advanced on Addis Ababa from all sides, and Mengistu fled the country with 50 family and Derg members. He was granted asylum in Zimbabwe as an official guest of Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe. Mengistu left behind almost the entire membership of the original Derg and the WPE leadership. The regime only survived without him for another week before the EPRDF streamed into the capital, precluding the previous leadership's escape. Almost all were promptly arrested and put on trial upon the assumption of power by the EPRDF. 
Mengistu has claimed that the takeover of his country resulted from the policies of Mikhail Gorbachev, who in his view allowed the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the termination of its aid to Ethiopia. An assassination attempt against Mengistu occurred on 4 November 1995, while he was out walking with his wife, Wabanki Bishaw, near his home in the Gun Hill suburb of Harare. While Mengistu was unharmed, his alleged attacker, Solomon Haile Gebra Michael, an Eritrean, was shot and arrested by Mengistu's bodyguards. He was later tried for this assassination attempt, pleading not guilty in a Zimbabwean court on 8 July 1996. The Eritrean ambassador to South Africa, Sege Tesva Sion, flew to Harare to attend the trial. The attacker was sentenced to 10 years in prison, while his accomplice Abraham Galitam Joseph, who had been arrested in a police raid, was sentenced to five years. They said that they had been tortured under Mengistu, and on appeal their sentences were reduced to two years each due to mitigatory circumstances. The Ethiopian ambassador to Zimbabwe, Fantahoun Haile Michael, said his government was not involved in the assassination attempt, and that he heard about the incident from the media. As of 2018, Mengistu still resides in Zimbabwe, despite the Ethiopian government's desire that he be extradited. He is said to live in luxurious circumstances, and it is claimed that he advised Mugabe on security matters. According to Zimbabwean intelligence sources, he proposed the idea of clearing slums, which was implemented as Operation Murambatsvina in 2005, and chaired meetings at which the operation was planned. State Security Minister Didymus Matasa strongly denied that Mengistu was involved in Operation Murambatsvina in any way, saying that Mengistu does not interfere at all with the affairs of our country. We also do not allow him to interfere with his country from Zimbabwe." In 2018, former Prime Minister of Ethiopia Halemariam Desalane published a photo of himself meeting with Mengistu. He withdrew the photo after criticism. <laughs> <laughs> Genocide trial Mengistu was charged by the Ethiopian government led by Melis Zenawi, in absentia, for the killing of nearly 2,000 people. The charge sheet and evidence list for his crimes was 8,000 pages long. The evidence against him included signed execution orders, videos of torture sessions and personal testimony. The trial began in 1994 and ended in 2006. The court found Mengistu guilty as charged on 12 December 2006, and imposed a life sentence in January 2007. In addition to the genocide conviction, the court found him guilty of imprisonment, illegal homicide and illegal confiscation of property. Michael Clough, a U.S. attorney and longtime observer of Ethiopia, said in a statement, the biggest problem with prosecuting Mengistu for genocide is that his actions did not necessarily target a particular group. They were directed against anybody who was opposing his government, and they were generally much more political than based on any ethnic targeting. Some experts believe hundreds of thousands of university students, intellectuals, and politicians, including Emperor Haile Selassie, were killed during Mengistu's rule. Amnesty International estimates that a total of half a million people were killed during the Red Terror of 1977 and 1978. Human Rights Watch describes the Red Terror as one of the most systematic uses of mass murder by a state ever witnessed in Africa." During his reign it was not uncommon to see students, suspected government critics, or rebel sympathizers hanging from lampposts each morning. Mengistu himself is alleged to have murdered opponents by garroting or shooting them, saying that he was leading by example. Estimates of the number of deaths for which he was responsible range from 500,000 to over 2 million. 106 Derg officials were accused of genocide during the trials, but only 36 of them were present in the court. Several former members of the Derg have been sentenced to death. After Mengistu's conviction in December 2006, the Zimbabwean government said that he still enjoyed asylum and would not be extradited. A Zimbabwean government spokesman explained this by saying that, Mengistu and his government played a key and commendable role during our struggle for independence. According to the spokesman, Mengistu assisted Zimbabwean guerrilla fighters during the Rhodesian Bush War by providing training and arms. After the war, he had provided training for Zimbabwean Air Force pilots. The spokesman said that, 
not many countries have shown such commitment to us. Following an appeal on 26 May 2008, Mengistu was sentenced to death in absentia by Ethiopia's High Court, overturning his previous sentence of life imprisonment. Twenty-three of his most senior aides also received death sentences that were commuted on 1 June 2011. As of 4 October 2011, 16 of former Mengistu officials have been released from prison on parole, due to their old age and good behavior while incarcerated. However, Mengistu's sentence remained unchanged. Topic: Memoirs. In 2010, Mengistu announced the publication of his memoirs. In early 2012, a manuscript of the memoir entitled Tiglachin, Our Struggle, in Amharic was leaked onto the internet. Some months later the first leaked volume was published in the United States, and in 2016 the second volume followed. This time it was published in Ethiopia. Mengistu accused the remnants of the EPRP of leaking the first volume to sabotage his publication. <laughs> Personal life Mengistu married Wabanki Bishaw in 1968. They have a son, Andane, and daughters, Tijasat and Timahirt. <laughs> Notes <laughs>